that's gone sale these days. They're snapped up in minutes, and if you're not right at the front of the queue, chances are you'll miss out. I've pulled over to the side of this wet Oxfordshire road one minute before nine. I'm after some tickets for a Def Leppard Whitesnake gig, but like many of the people I'll be competing against, I can't stand either of the bands. Like them, all I care about this morning is getting my hands on the tickets, then seeing how much profit I can make by flogging them on to genuine fans. For one time only, I'm joining the ranks of the 21st century touts. Well, I'm going to say, actually, what at its best, it's the Wild West, isn't it? <laughs> it's my worry. At its worst, it's, uh, it's complete anarchy. Every fan has the right to resell a ticket if they can't use it. In the past, they'd have to sit out on a street corner and deal with shady touts. Instead, they can now buy it in a safe, secure, guaranteed way. It's kind of like, you know, my blood was boiling. It's not just one or two fans missing out. It's whole swathes of people. The tickets simply aren't there for the genuine fan. I'm Jeff Bird, and in tonight's Five Live report, I investigate the winners and losers in the resale ticket market, in which fans pay out half a billion pounds a year. And how easy it is to pick up illegal Premiership tickets without going anywhere near a backstreet tout on match day. Online at bbc.co.uk slash five live. bbc.co.uk slash five live. The Five Live Report. I've come to pleasant and prosperous Wilmslow in Cheshire to meet Stephanie Sankey. She's one of a growing number of people who buy tickets for an event, in this case the Spice Girls at Manchester Arena, and then realise they're not in a position to go, so she's selling her tickets online. Stephanie's a very small part of a very big industry, the resale ticket market, so despised by some parts of the official industry and said to be worth as much as half a billion pounds a year in the UK alone. Very soon we'll know just how much she's managed to make. Stephanie? Hello. Hello, I'm Jeff. To nice go. to see you. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and it's still, still stuck on at 155. 155. Six, Six seconds, two, and it's sold. That's right. It's uh, not a massive profit, but then I wasn't out to make a profit. At least I've, I've sold them and I've got my money back. So. You've, you've resold four tickets then? Uh, two at a time. You've made overall a, a profit of a hundred pounds, but you didn't really, you didn't set out to make that profit. You just really wanted your to cover your costs. Uh, yeah. But nonetheless, you've you've made that money. But do you regard yourself as a, as a tout? No, not at all. Um, I'm definitely not going to live off a hundred pounds, and it's not a regular occurrence. And my tickets are totally genuine and above board, and I'm not loose or sleazy or you know, dodgy looking or anything like that. And what about the principle, in, in terms of these people deliberately setting out to, to buy tickets and then sell them on at a profit? Well, it, doesn't, it doesn't really bother me, to be honest. Everybody makes a living the way they want to make a living. It, it, the stupid people at the end of the day are the people who are going to pay these ridiculous prices. They wouldn't be in business if people weren't willing to pay that much. There's no skin off my nose. I don't care. OK, so I'm at my own computer now and putting in the details onto this auction site. There were plenty I could have gone for. Two tickets to see Legends of Rock, Def Leppard and White Snake together. Good luck and happy bidding. OK, just change the uh, size of the letters, make them nice and big. Choose a colour, deep purple I think. Now, interestingly enough, this concert hasn't sold out, but in spite of that, and in spite of the fact that it's months away, there are over 30 other people selling upwards of 80 tickets on here. And I've had a check to see what else they're selling, and all but a couple are selling plenty of other tickets to plenty of other shows. Now, clearly, they have no intention of going to these concerts. They're buying and selling these tickets on a systematic basis, purely to make money. And according to music fan Dean Fitzpatrick, who lives just a short walk away from Stephanie Sankey's house in Wilmslow, that's bad news. So this is a, a live album, obviously. It is. It's Neil Young Unplugged um, from the early 90s. Um, I bought it just after I saw Neil Young for the first time. As soon as we heard Neil was touring again, we tried on Ticketmaster very quickly. Um, the tickets sold out and we were unable to secure ourselves some tickets to see him in Manchester. Even after just a couple of hours of them selling out on Ticketmaster, 
the prices they were being offered on eBay at that early stage. Sort of 150 was the minimum price for a, t a ticket. And what was, what was the face value originally? Um, the face value that we were looking at to buy was £55. The initial disappointment of not getting a ticket quickly turned to outrage at the prices that were being offered. What happened next then? My partner was able to secure two tickets to see him at the Hammersmith Apollo. And these were additional dates? They were, yes. They, they were two extra dates that were added on at the end of the tour. For the pair, it was about £120 all told. How did the costs compare now? Well, obviously, the prices we've paid for the tickets and travelling down to London, it's going to cost us in, in the region of was £200. It's still going to be cheaper than paying an eBay price ticket to see him 12 miles away. I fundamentally don't know how this situation arises and how people are able to buy tickets in, in such numbers and then almost immediately offer them to genuine fans for super inflated prices. Tickets are just sucked up by these people, organisations, I don't know, but you know the, the tickets simply aren't there um, for the genuine fan. It's, um, it's a horrendous practice. <laughs> There are two distinct parts of the secondary market. Agents who sell on tickets direct through their own companies and websites. And then the marketplaces like eBay, Viagogo and Get Me In. These don't buy or sell. They provide a space for people with tickets to meet people with the money to buy them. Then take a cut of the transaction. These marketplaces are where most of the money is traded, according to Graham Burns, head of the Association of Secondary Ticket Agents. We met outside the same Spice Girls gig Stephanie Sankey was unable to get to. To date at the Spice Girls tour, this is the 23rd of, of January, the total value of sales in the secondary market is £7,337,000 worth of tickets. Of that, uh, via GoGo, £2.5 million worth and just behind them eBay have sold just £2,128,000 worth of ticket. The most expensive ticket they sold, the average ticket I should say was £75, the most expensive was 2150 On Via Gogo the most expensive was 5638 for a single ticket that was. That would be the middle row front seats with the prawn sandwiches beforehand and the champagne afterwards. So the UK ticketing industry is worth a billion pounds. Football, cricket, sport, music, theatre. How much do you think? We estimate market? that the secondary market is half that. We estimate that the secondary market is half a billion pounds, 200 million of which is the music industry. The question is, who's selling all these tickets and making all that money? Ticketmaster, the main primary ticket agency, told a recent government select committee inquiry about highly organised touting operations using sophisticated computer technology and call centres to bombard ticketing websites and phone lines to buy up a large proportion of tickets as soon as they're on sale. Meanwhile, marketplaces like eBay argue the vast majority of sellers on their sites shift just a handful of tickets in a typical year. It is, they loudly proclaim to anyone who'll listen, just lots of Stephanie Sankeys passing on tickets they bought in good faith. Eric Baker set up via GoGo after running a similar site in the States. 97% of people who sold tickets on Viagogo in 2007 sold 10 or fewer tickets over the course of the year. If you're a tout and you're selling 10 or fewer tickets, you probably need to find a new line of work. The question there, though, is um, if, if those 3% are selling 100 times more than that, then you quickly get a different picture of the market where a very high or a significant proportion is in the hands of a small number of people. Do you have a figure for the proportion of tickets sold in total by those three percent? We really track by percentage of sellers again and so we really look at the 97 percent. Ten is not a high number so you know it would rapidly increase to a hundred percent if you went slightly above ten. Well it's not a rubbish People put uh, all sorts of different IDs up online. They've got lots of different credit cards to use, different addresses. Rob Ballantyne's the head of the Concert Promoters Association. The promoter's role is to work with the artist and venue to set a face value on tickets. They see sellers in the secondary market as profiteers inflating prices. Let's put it this way. If this was a problem caused by a few people who could no longer attend an event and wanted their money back, I don't think there'd be the media coverage that there is. This is a massive industry. This is nothing to do with people just getting rid of the odd ticket here, there and everywhere. 
The, the guy that you spoke to who owns Viagogo sold his last business in America for 100 million pounds to eBay. That's not a few people who found out they couldn't attend on Sunday because their granny was dead. Online at bbc.co.uk slash 5live. bbc.co.uk slash 